Hey everyone, welcome back. We have a new game against Grandmaster Riccardi. Plays knight f3. Let's go knight f6. From Argentina. Argentina, let's see. Pablo Riccardi. Okay, nice. Let's play c5, one of my main lines here. And then d5. The point is to take over the center before uh, playing the fianchetto and so on. They're normally Grunfeld players play the g6 move quite early, but the ante Grunfeld uh, is quite annoying, so with this move order black takes some space and uh, tries to to take uh, over the initiative early on. Normally they play knight c3 before castling around this position and then I'm forced to play knight c7. It would be a, ve a better version for white than the one in the game. So as far as I can tell this version is quite uh, good for me. Because you don't have to retreat the knight and uh, it's like a reverse Marozzi. Marozzi structure. Some people call it the Marozzi bind. And uh, it's just a... Uh, the classical variation, only white uh, has a tempo up because he played it with white instead of black. But I don't think it matters too much in these structures. I just have to play useful waiting moves, avoid uh, too many trades, avoid uh, uh, giving too much counterplay. And I'm basically playing white here for free. So I would consider it to be uh, better, uh, at least slightly better for black uh, if I'm not doing anything wrong. So he was attacking c5. Now he's preparing some b4 related ideas. I think queen d7 should make sense. Normally they go queen a4 or something like that. Preparing or trying to prepare some b4 ideas. So queen a4 here would immediately create a threat of knight takes e5 with some uh, gain, material gains. Uh, I would like as a response to, to defend the queen with one of my rooks. I'm still not sure which one because normally I, I like to play f5 in this structure, so rook a d8 would make sense. But another interesting plan is to go rook a b8 and be ready to play b5 at the right moment. So it's hard to choose. Either way, it would probably go knight to d2, to which I can play knight d4. So, hmm. Okay, assuming I don't miss any huge tactics, I would like to have this rook play a little bit more aggressively. Now, a nice idea would be to move this rook because knight d2 after knight d4 will allow some tactics. If queen takes d7, knight takes e2, intermediate move, and then I gain some uh, material. So, just one pawn probably, but uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, it ruins his structure at the same time. So after knight d2, knight d4, queen d1 will be forced, but then my position will be better. So rook fd1 prepares the idea of king f1 after knight d2 check, and uh, thus uh, renewing the idea of, of knight d2. So in this case, I would like to play more aggressively. Continue my plan to play f5. And uh, this time I'm preventing knight d2 uh, because I have f4 uh, to trap the bishop. Yeah, this is the typical idea. But for some reason I assumed it will be good for me. But now that I see e5 is hanging, it doesn't seem so, so easy. Knight d4 isn't working as much as I'd like it to work. I guess I could take and then play knight d4. I mean bishop f3 followed by knight d4 okay f4 makes some sense I guess he also threats, threatens some b5 related ideas f4 bishop d2 hmm this is interesting so bishop f3 Okay, I really like f4, so I hope I'm not missing anything big, 
but now bishop f3 is the normal follow-up and I think my position should be better hmm Okay, I don't see a refutation, so let's try. So I take this one. If it takes back with the bishop, knight d4, with the point that after queen to xd7, I have knight takes f3, intermediate move. Uh, but for some reason I forgot that instead of taking back, he can play king g2. And then I wouldn't ruin his, structures, his structure as much as I like. I'd like to ruin. So... Perhaps f takes g3 was an interesting uh, intermediate move, but then if he takes with the pawn after fg3, hg3, bishop f3, the same variation with ef would be much less uh, favorable for me. And I'm giving up some of my space. So, yeah, I'm not too happy about uh, the tactics here, but I have to, to do it anyway because. There's a famous saying, if you say A, then you should say B. So, now I have to do it. Maybe I can avoid taking for one move and save time. I don't see any... Ah, he has bishop g4. And then it's hard for me to punish him. Okay, I guess I should take... Yeah. And uh, if king g2, I, have, I want to play rook d7, so... Now we got into the position I wanted. I'm not sure if it's that good, but it shouldn't be worse for me. And uh, yeah, I should find a way to proceed. I guess grabbing material is logical. And as mentioned, in most of my videos, I don't have much time left. So I better uh, uh, try to increase the pace a little bit. So I'm a pawn up, 40 seconds less on the clock, I should just uh, play fast and uh, try to convert. I hope you'll enjoy the, the process of my attempt to convert uh, without too many explanations. Because normally I, would, I wouldn't mind speaking and compromising uh, some of my results, but uh, according to some of the comments, uh, people would prefer to see me winning more and playing better chess and talking less in the critical moments over learning uh, maybe a little bit more okay so flagging is uh, one of the main strategies in this uh, time control since there is no increment b5 is an interesting idea followed by c4 also rook d4 hmm he wants rook e4 himself okay I'll try. Maybe it doesn't work, but I guess it's not such a good move to, to have my pawn on the dark square. But I want to try for practical reasons. Yeah, definitely wasn't the best move. Try to grab the apon and see where it takes me. Hmm. Interesting choice. What can I do now? I guess I can take and go king c6. And maybe a tra trap his bishop if possible. Also attack this guy at the same time. And this bishop is trapped, isn't it? Okay, so now after this, the only question is whether or not he can exchange the pawns. Oh, and it's a blind bishop, as they say. 
So it's not as simple as I would hope, especially with the time situation. Okay, I would like to exchange the pawns, but oh, I ruined it. Okay, yeah, too bad, too bad. Sorry for my awful technique. Yeah, good move draw. and the draw. Ah, yeah, this was a bit too much. The rook d4 is a terrible move. I thought uh, simplifying would make it easier to to try to flag him later on, but it was too simple. And going for the piece looked uh, winning at first glance, but I'm not so convinced anymore. Um, yeah, bishop takes before would be the simpler attempt. Let's see what the computer thinks here. Uh, but before I, I check, just one quick look with my own eyes. So this position g5 should be the critical move. So king e5, g5 to avoid uh, any f4 related ideas. But still, I think he can play f4. And my problem is that if I play uh, h4, then it's going to be a blind bishop, as they say, on h1. So it can't uh, get the king away from the corner. So I have to go something like g4. Yeah, but now it looks kind of good for me. Because h4 followed by g3 is a threat. Hmm. For some reason I misevaluated this position. King f5, king v5, king g6, h4. Seems winning. So this position I don't see a way for him to to proceed. I guess after g5 black is completely winning. I uh, actually saw this move and for some reason for, for some reason I, I imagined that after f4 g4 he will be able to go for my pawn because it's on a light square. Uh, that's unfortunate. So let's check with the computer, verify that it's winning. Maybe there is a draw somehow. So king f5. Yeah, just winning for black. He cannot make any progress. I'll just grab this pawn and bring the king over. Ah, too bad. So taking the piece probably was the right call. Or maybe not. Actually, now that I think about it, in this position he could have played f4 immediately and then prepare king e5 and the same plan like in the game hmm this is far trickier than i had thought it should be winning but it's hard to to say exactly so normally i would like to avoid letting him bring his king over if it does, it should be close to a draw. But then b5 is coming and I don't have much to do. This should be a draw. Yeah. So after f4, bishop d6 is recommended by the computer. Let's have a quick look. And then it's winning. But this is a not an easy move to spot. I guess the, the main point of bishop d6 in this position is that I'm threatening bishop takes f4. I'm not. Oh, the king is close enough. Okay. So just bishop b8. And if you go farther, then I take on f4. This is the point. Yeah. That's quite deep. Bishop d6, just prophylactic uh, against... Prophylaxis against uh, any any attempt to bring the king over. Uh, that's quite interesting. I wonder if there are any other wins. I don't know how to to ask the computer to show me more moves, but let's just check. Bishop takes b4 is not winning, I, gu I guess, after king e5. Um, yeah, it's not. We get the blind bishop. I don't see any other serious moves for black. So bishop d6 was amazing. Um, king e5, g5 is just winning. So, I think I played the endgame well. Only one blunder was enough to ruin 
all my uh, hard work. Yeah, now it's already a draw, unfortunately. F4 was precise, and then I, I can't save my pawns from being traded, and thus uh, entering a draw. Mm, let's go back a little bit, so to the point where I played rook d4. Oh, another thing I wanted to see real quick is if I can take on b4 and, and claim to be much better. Yeah, I can. The point is that I have bishop c5 check coming. So king e5 is the key. Idea for white. To try to go for my pawns quickly. And uh, now the key move is bishop c3 check. If I go here, king e6 is a draw once again, followed by f4. Or bishop takes b6 and f4. So bishop c3 is the important move. And then if king e6, b5. Okay. And if king f4, bishop f6 should be close to a win. Or just completely winning. Yeah, so bishop c3, another uh, strong move that I should have found had, had I played bishop takes b4, which I'm not uh, sure I would have. I guess I would, but uh, we can never know in retrospect. So rook d4 I suspect is not accurate, but let's have a look. So first, before I look at the position with the computer, uh, this position, just to say, uh, c takes on b3, on b4, should be a better choice. And then just somehow try to put pressure. I can also try to play bishop d6 here and exchange the bishops, or bishop f6 and try to get this version, in case he takes take with the rook. I like my chances in all of these lines. So, yeah, rook d4 was very concrete, so now I'm turning on the computer. g5 was a nice idea I was thinking about, but I wasn't too fond of bishop b8. Rook d7 is a hard move to spot in this time control. But a6 apparently is also quite good. Okay, so g5 was strong. Rook d4 was definitely an inaccuracy from practical point of view. But apparently it's quite a strong move as well. Yeah, this endgame... It's quite good for me. Yeah, because I can create another passed pawn on the, on the h file with g5 h4, and two passed pawns combined with some pressure on the queen side should be enough for a win. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, let's have a quick look at what happened in the beginning. So, as I mentioned, this is uh, like I'm playing white. The tempo doesn't matter that much, as the computer uh, uh, agrees. With my evaluation, black is slightly better, as if he were white. Now, I should have brought the other rook. Yeah, rook fd8 was a more solid move. Queen b7 is kind of interesting. I didn't even consider it. Quite an original move in this position. And uh, yeah, now f5 is quite nice. f4 and queen e6, preparing bishop b3, was very strong. Hmm, I missed it. But bishop f3 is even stronger now. Okay, not bad, not bad. We're doing good. Check. And takes. Check. And king g2, rook d7, followed by e4 check. Wow, this I have to show on the board. Not so sure if I fully understand the point, but let's have a look. Rook d7, king f3, and e4. Quite a fantastic move to, to be played. Let's have a quick look what happens Check. if I take. Yeah, my, my advantage here is not very big unless I find this amazing move. First point I can immediately spot is that if he takes with the pawn, I have rook fd8. But uh, the move that... There are two moves that are really hard for me to to find uh, over the board in the blitz. Is uh, to understand after king e4, I, I have this fg3. And then evaluate this as winning. Yeah. It's not too uh, obvious for me. At least not during uh, the game. Um, so fg3 was the key. And also this position, I mean, to evaluate it as so much better for for black after having forced his king to e4. I guess the king is, is as weak as it is active. So this was a very interesting way to play. And if king g2, which is another logical move, f3 was the point. And then d3 is hanging. Yeah. 
an EF I can take and then take on D3. Check. Yeah. So, and the computer thinks even FG followed by ED should be very strong for uh, black. So either way, E4 is amazing. Should have found it. Uh, but uh, even if I did see it, he didn't give me a chance to play it. I wonder if my opponent actually saw this move. And uh, the end game we reached was uh, quite good for me. Yeah, I played this entire game quite well. At this point, maybe I could have played a bit more accurately. So I had only one blunder at the end and around this point some some inaccuracies. So let's have a quick look. A6 is interesting, trying to prevent B5, I guess. Let's have a look. If I have another move, I'm wondering what... I'm, yeah, C4. Okay, C4 is the idea. Okay, A6 is very deep. I like it. What I played in the game, King F7 took away some of my advantage. Yeah, putting my pawn on a light square, trying to fix this pawn on the bishop's color is usually a good idea. And uh, once again, putting the pawns on the opposite color from his bishop. And rook d4 was the decision we discussed earlier. So. Overall a decent game, one blunder at the end that ruined everything, but at least it was a draw. And uh, not a blunder that cost me the entire game. Uh, I hope you learned something from this game and the analysis of this end game. Um, and if you want to learn some more, then uh, keep watching the next videos.